Hello, I'm David Chaston with 9 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This week, everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock, with news credit rating agencies are shaking whole economies. But first, the latest US Fed minutes released is getting market attention. These show that the Fed thought it would be soon be appropriate to raise short-term interest rates again, and markets are taking that as meaning the next rate hike will be in June. These minutes also show a consensus on a plan to shrink its $4.5 trillion stockpile of Treasury and mortgage securities. In China, it's all about Moody's credit rating downgrade. Moody's says it expects the financial strength of their economy will erode in coming years as growth slows and debt continues to rise. Essentially, the downgrade is over the unrestrained growth of debt, which has grown far faster than economic output. An MSCI, a key index firm, is publicly refusing to include paper from mainland China firms in any of its indexes, and another sharp rebuke to the way the Chinese are managing, or more accurately, not managing, their debt risks. China has directly dismissed the Moody's downgrade, basically saying, but China is special, and they see no problem with the rampant debt growth. The initial impact of the downgrade will be rising costs for Chinese companies who have raised debt outside the country, and that will push them back to raising it at home, potentially creating a negative feedback loop. More broadly, world trade flows grew in the first quarter, continuing a recovery that began in the second half of last year. It's an indication that the global economy may be set to enjoy a stronger growth period. The revival in trade flows has also been noted by freight companies. Airlines have reported that demand for air freight was 11% higher in the first quarter than the same period a year ago, while large shipping lines have said container volumes were up 10% in the same period. In Australia, the smaller banks have been fretting about their recent credit rating downgrades, and there is growing concern that there are changes afoot for the federal government to put some distance between it and the implied guarantee and support for the four pillar banks. That move will see those banks having to raise significant new capital, a shift already signalled by APRA. But that implied support is the basis for the current credit ratings of those large banks, and without it, their credit ratings will likely fall and that is even as they have bolstered their capital position at the behest of their government. In New York, the US Treasury 10-year yield is lower today at 2.26%. The yield inversion, that's the 5.10 inversion in China, got flatter overnight. It is still there, but now only two basis points, even as rates rose across the board following the credit ratings move. The price of oil is just a touch weaker today. The US crude benchmark is now just under 51.50 a barrel, while the Brent benchmark is just under 54. Gold is slightly higher, however, now up at $1,257 an ounce. Meanwhile, the Kiwi dollar has been holding its own, buoyed by yesterday's strong trade balance data, and is now at 70.3 US cents. On the cross rates, the Kiwi is at 94 Aussie cents and 62.8 Euro cents. The TWI is at 74.6. That's a one month high. And Bitcoin has risen even higher in the past day, steadily rising to $2,477, another 9% in 24 hours. I'm David Chaston. That was 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.